Hi, it's Rachel. So continuing on with this analogy of the womb. So what our flesh symbolizes is the mother, in a sense. And remember from all these analogies, especially this one, there are so many different connections, okay? And it's, it really is incredible. So if you start diving into this, understanding how being in the womb, child, and all those different things, it really speaks a lot of our spiritual development. But anyway, the flesh, the outward, the mother is like, is like our flesh. So think of the child is under the veil of flesh. Okay, that is what our existence here is like. We, and because of that, the Heavenly Father is, has a sense of unrealness to Him. His realness is sort of in a reality beyond our own. And because in His divine love, there is no suffering. There is no weeping. There are no tears. It is perfect peace. He's in the light, okay? There is no darkness. So there is a great contrast to being fully with Him in a oneness than what we're now experiencing. And that's why faith is required because it's only by faith of our understanding and belief in that that we can grow, okay? Because it's beyond this reality in a sense. But when you start walking in his truths and this is what you discover. So even though it's like the connecting to his spirit as we one day will, as a child connects to the Father and sees them face to face. In this womb, we can sense His love and learn about His presence being there, learn what this is all about. But there's that disconnect, and that's why the faith is required. That's why we even have the faith. But once you come into that new birth, the faith fades because it's no longer needed. So what you have is just a knowing. And that is a beautiful place of rest. And that is when you truly enter into your eternal rest. And even though we are in the light with Him, we still grow. But now we grow in the light by the light. Okay? So there is no more sin or error. Sin or error exists in this darkness where where our soul is developing because you become born when you're when his will consumes your will when you can find a harmony and unity with him that's what brings you into that birth so until you get to that point at your soul development you can't come to birth okay cuz that's why otherwise you just stay dormant it's an egg or you're somewhere in between all right so that's very important to understand but our faith is what keeps pushing us forward because you learn his truths and you see the perfection of them you experience the wisdom and the love that is in them and and when you start learning all of his truths just fit together so absolutely perfectly and that gives you a sense of their absoluteness, okay, and their divinity because they are so encapsulated in that love because they reflect that love because truth serves to love. When you walk in that truth coming from the spirit of love, that's how you love. They go together. They're this, I mean, you can't have one without the other, okay? So that's what we're learning here in this womb are these, these truths of God that actually help us to love and that's why that's the most on your journey when you're seeking after the Heavenly Father and that this is a very diligent seeking here we're groping around in the darkness okay and whatever faith we have that kind of serves as a flashlight here but um, we are learning because we're in the darkness through error because we don't know what is and what's not I mean we're blind we're stumbling around things we but in the light, you just grow by the light. You don't stumble, okay? There's no sin and error there. 
And that's why that's the difference. Okay, one, you come into that soul development so that you're united to the Father and you can't have any sin or error when you come into the light, and but you still grow. You grow for eternity because that is the beauty of life and the beauty of moving deeper and ever more into that love and that experience. But it's a different type of growth. It's no longer by error that you had while you were in the darkness, stumbling around trying to figure out how to walk. So it's a very different reality. So the most important truths that you can learn are about love and how to love. How to, so I said starting with how to perceive others because how you perceive them directs your response, your actions, your words. So that is the so important where I talked about you come and find that unity where the eye of God, his perception, his light fills the eye of your soul, okay? The heart of your perceptions of what is real and what's not. So when your eyes become full of light, everything is full of light because you're perceiving rightly and everything follows that. But if you have darkness, meaning you don't have the understanding and the truths of God and that love of God, so you don't perceive yourself rightly or God rightly or others rightly, which that's where you start in the darkness. But in that faith and that learning, that's what you start seeing. You start seeing differently and you understand how powerful a true perception is. But again, we can only kind of learn and experience that in part. It's only when we come to birth are we fully able to function in the light. So a baby, an embryo, can't function outside of the womb. Okay, they have to grow to a certain maturity to be able to function. So that's what we have to do. And part of that is that perception that changes, that is crafted by learning and communing with that divine love of God. So the most important truths that you learn have to do with how to love. So it starts with your perception, but then you learn how to respond to others, how to treat others, how to speak to others, um, how, what that love, how it's expressed through you, in you, in every area of your life. The actions that you do regarding your own life and your own lifestyle, your own situations. I mean, every, every relationship you have, all of this is training ground in which God teaches you how to perceive with eyes of light, this how to love and this how to walk in his wisdom. Because that's the other thing that you start growing and we start growing in this divine love is that divine intellect. That is because you're, you have a perception of wisdom, okay, when your eyes are full of light that is far superior to what you could have in your own human capability. It's very, very powerful. So as you start to gain these things, you just grow and grow and grow your spirit in the womb, your soul that can be a part of divinity. It's our soul that connects to God. Our spirit body that covers our soul, our flesh that covers that all follows. Okay, so we have to come to a point in our walk where our flesh is subservient to our, that soul development. It serves that soul development. And that's where it comes in is that this outward flesh is like the mother, okay, of our soul. And so this, and if we take care of the flesh, meaning if a mother is, takes care of herself and she is healthy and she does things that nurture the baby in the womb, that baby grows very healthy. If she takes in things that is not good for her, it's not good for her baby. Okay, so that's why um, our flesh life is very important because if we are tainting our flesh by continuing to do things that are counter to that soul development, that soul can't grow. That's why it's very important to understand what you're seeing, what your, what kind of lifestyle you're living. Are you honoring? Are you respecting? Are you um, really valuing others and yourself? Because if you aren't, and you're continually to walk in ways that are harmful, that greatly hinders your soul development. 
okay, because you're not nurturing it. It's just like that baby that receives nourishment through the umbilical cord. That's what we're doing. Whatever we're bringing into our flesh, that's what we're feeding our soul. And if it's not good, it's of the things that are contrary to that pure, perfect love of God, then it's going to, our soul won't grow. Okay, it'll become stagnant. And it harms it. And you can feel that. Okay, so, and on the reverse side, remember I said those two greatly impact each other. As our soul grows, it, we can start seeing how it impacts our flesh and our physical reality. So it's very important to understand that what you're bringing in through your flesh, your, your experiences in the physical, okay, what you're focusing on, if you're feeding fears, focusing on fears, if you're feeding lust, focusing on that, if you are walking contrary, um, all of those things are, have great ramifications. Okay, and that goes back to what you reap, you sow. So what we're sowing here in this world is greatly affecting that soul development, which affects that birth and coming into that unity with God. So as you're going on this journey and all the things that I have learned over the years that I've been seeking, I will tell you that if you can just focus on understanding what that divine love is, okay, that is beyond human capability, okay, is coming from the perception of God, the love of God, how He would love, and really understanding who God is. Because in this room there are many, many, many false images because no one sees Him face to face, okay? People that are growing in their soul have a soul perception and as you grow especially as you start to come to birth you start seeing him with your soul perceptions in a way you never have before that is just amazing but it's always veiled okay it's you're seeing dimly so it's very important to understand the true Heavenly Father and that's why when you start understanding this love and that's why I wanted to give you this analogy because if you can understand how a father loves the baby in the womb okay the perfect loving father and can't wait for that baby to come forth and to embrace and face to face understanding that love that God has for us there is nothing more powerful in your life but it's difficult at first because of all the false images here because love is not understood here in this place of darkness People are stumbling around and we've been so hurt and wounded by the error of other people because they can't see in their blindness that our love has been tainted. And so we take those tainted characteristics and we place them upon God's love. That's our first natural response. How we have experienced love in this womb is what we attribute to him, but that doesn't mean it's true. Okay, and often it's not true. You have to diligently seek to understand who he truly is to get in touch with that, the real. Okay, so because we're in this womb, um, which is a temporary state, okay, this is in a sense not our real state because our real state is having that oneness and that unity with him. This is a temporary state that is serving many, many purposes, okay, especially the exercise of our free will because only if we have free will can we love. You can't really love without free will, but you have to teach and instruct and mold that free will, and that is a big part of what we learn here, and ultimately what you do is you take your free will and you freely, delightly, desirously choose for God's will that you, who you have learned. You have understood its ways. You have seen your inability to walk in that, but you have desired it with all your being to consume you. And when you start getting into that place, as I said, you start growing very much in your soul and you start coming ready to come into that birth. But don't get lost in all the different concepts and ideas because those can be very distracting around who God is. Focus on that one thing just like Jesus Christ told us. The 
first two commandments. Okay, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. That will take your entire life to learn that and to come to that point and to love others as yourself. And that's the thing, when you start under focusing on that love of God, then you're going to be able to understand how to love others. You're going to understand what that looks like. You're going to understand what that love feels like within yourself and how it changes how you respond within yourself and how you treat yourself. Okay, it's an all-consuming love. It consumes everything. There's nothing untouched by it. But if you'll focus on those two things, then you're going to start growing in your soul and you're going to start experiencing and being prepared to come forth as a new creation, a soul that can actually hold part of the divinity of God, the main attribute, that divine love. And it is such a beautiful transformation in something that is becomes your most deepest, foremost desire.